Smithsonian is talking about sound. Right? It's a sound action that provoked it, or was the most important point element in it. And then, you know, uh, when I was re watching the uh, United States, I, I uh, suddenly came to realize that there also there's an emphasis on sound. Detriment of the, I mean, to the detriment of the image, right? And so my question to you is, why do we feel sound and see, and you have a paper on soundscapes, right? So this fascination with and in sound, you know, and, and, and to you seems to be more powerful, perhaps, more permanent, more something, uh, more unique, I don't know, but these black screens where we are, you know, we have no option but to focus on sound. So, I don't know. <laughs> Talk about this, um, this relationship between the sound and the image for you as a film. Um, they, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely most of the uh, most of the films start with sound for me, like the process starts with sound. So it's always there's some kind of um, a sound that I'm interested in, like the, like in Balagani Malik Said, it's the, you know, the, the bedtime stories, the children's stories, or like the folk tales that Abla Fadila or Fuad al and um, and uh, same thing with the, with the Wala Said and Akhar also, because the interest came from the talk shows first. So I don't know, I never thought about it in that way that it's necessarily like which comes first, but um, as an element, yes, as the first sort of like interest or motivation. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, then it sort of always blends in, like always, I think, Balghani wa Malik Said was completely edited based on sound almost entirely. I made very few changes in the sound. With Ala Said and Akhar, which was actually like, it's, it's a, it was quite a collaborative process with, uh, with Luli. And what we did was like experimenting a lot with the sound and then, and then we started putting the images and then seeing. So eventually it was, everything was edited together, text and sound and images. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I think the sound, I mean, I'm actually quite ambivalent about the sound. I don't know if that was clear from my uh, comments earlier. So yeah, I mean, the sound is intended to um, sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe give a, sorry? It, I mean, it, it, probably on a different level, I think because we, yeah, and with uh, you know, we're in with uh, modernity. I think there's always a, a much higher um, uh, uh, attention or sort of uh, a position given to visuals as opposed to you know what's visual as opposed to what's auditory. Um, so I think on some level, like not necessarily consciously or like that's my like life project or anything, but you know, it's it's something that. I've, I've always been more interested in sound. And uh, it, it comes very naturally, like the talk shows, I was listening to them while I'm doing everything else. And uh, that's also because they're much more auditory than they are visual. Like there's, there's no visuals. So, I mean, you can very much listen to Lamis al Hadidi or watch her, it doesn't really make a difference. Or sometimes it does, but you know, <laughs> depending on the costume of the night. But. <laughs> Uh, but you know, that's the, yeah, uh, so yeah, I think all these things are coming together, but why, why I'm saying I'm ambivalent, because also that, you know, the sound also so, sort of puts the image in a very specific, you know, position, like it says like, okay, you should see this image that way, you know, so this is something I'm quite, I don't know, I'm, I mean, I, I watch this stuff now and I'm ambivalent about it, like what would happen if there's no sound, or what would happen if there's no image, so, you know, like they don't, uh, sort of assume meaning from one another, or yeah, you agree? <laughs> Between. I mean, I keep wondering while I was watching the film, what does the image have to? Uh, how does it? Um, relate to the sound and I like the idea that it doesn't 
almost for me at least. <laughs> but I'm fr like, but it's free. It's it frees you also. Like I mean, it, it, I've seen it. It's only the first time, but I, I feel a kind of freedom actually. It frees you from you know seeking meaning, uh, relating from between the image and the sound. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe if I see it again, I will see more connections. But I'm not, I didn't make the effort of the making connection. Like, you know, the eye sees an image and it hears, and the ear hears something. And you're uh, moving between the two. I mean, I enjoyed it a lot. I loved it. disagree with it. So wh what I understand is that you are transcending from the audiovisual to the audio only and then to the text and then to the mentality or discourse that's behind the text. So when you go this way with the, uh, with the talk show, you end up with the mentality of the talk show and the way someone like Mahmoud Saad is speaking and this mentality and this discourse. And when I compare that to the very subtle literary pieces that you read or that is in the other movies. I mean, you're just showing the difference of discourse. And I wish you to tell me if there is a difference between what you, what you produced and the, the fine arts production of audiovisual now, or this spatial places that are filled with sound and images in the new art galleries. I mean, how, how does that relate here? And does it come from plastic art and fine art, or does it come from cinema, or does it link the two in between? Well, this production, is it an artistic fine arts production, or is it a cinematic production, or is it a political, sarcastic production? <laughs> well, it, it's all in all. It, it, it grabs them all, but it's just, what you emphasize is something, what we interpret is a, is a different thing. So this is the joy of all of this. I mean, it's very postmodern, but it's still understandable. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, definitely not intentionally, like this distinction between like uh, the different discourses. Maybe, I mean, it's, it's, of course, it's a very interesting reading. I think, uh, you're, I mean, you're making me think about it, but, uh, yeah, I think that's one of the great things about this, uh, um, you know, about, I think, art, because you don't have to worry about those things. And um, unlike theory, for example, um, you know, like you have, you have the space to create all these, you have a space that can accept and take all forms of like high art and low art, and you put them together and you find elements in both that work without necessarily sort of, you know, consciously contemplating it. It's just, I think that's, uh, Luli was always saying this in the editing, like that there's always one like rule for things, which is if something works or it doesn't work. And I think we followed that, you know, like what works and what doesn't work. We didn't give like a lot of intellectual, um, you know, um, uh, weight or analysis to the clips. So of course, if like people could see this, this is really interesting. If you know that you, people can see different things in the film, uh, but just because the whole thing, I'm reflecting on the process. I'm, I'm just being honest that in the process, that's not what something that I think about. You didn't reflect conceptually on how to you, like your choices of images and, and sound. Maybe definitely not in a conscious manner. I think it's. I mean, I don't. Maybe I'll have to go back and, like, you know, <laughs> look in retrospect. But yeah, no, the connections between the sounds and the images are contemplated, but uh, the connections between the discourses is not what's. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, and actually, Balagania Malik Said was much more, I think, well-planned, like was much more structured in the process. 
it was very clear uh, with uh, وعلى صعيد اخر it took us a while i mean it took us quite a while with editing because we were really experimenting so it, the process itself like the text was not intended from the very beginning this is something that came about in the middle of editing and um, yeah it just came about sort of with the process So this is the second time I've seen the film, and I I found it really interesting in light of the comments that you made. And so I kind of saw, thinking about the film in relation to the f the earlier clips that you showed, that it like so when you started talking theoretically about you were sort of talking about Proust, you were mentioning kind of Benjamin, and sort of talking about like the image and, and relating it to memory. And then you went into kind of the excess of representation, so what's behind the image or what's left out of the image. And I thought that worked really well with the earlier pieces. And then you sort of went into, well, this kind of circling around the image and then talking about the destruction of the image. And I felt like in the last piece, the introduction of text and sound at times were working to destroy the image in a, in a way that was paralleling what you had said theoretically and not obliterating the image, but almost pushing it into the background. And I thought that was really interesting in terms of instead of circling around the image, trying to go behind the image or to the past or the, to the future, you were actually moving to other mediums. You were moving to allowing sound to overtake the image or allowing text to overtake the image. And so, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you're right. It's not, it's not necessarily an obliteration, right? Because even when you have the black, and this is something we talked a lot about, when you have a black uh, 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 screen with a subtitle, that's an image, for instance. That's not, you know, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not, a not there's no non-image. Or when you have a black screen with the sound, that's an image. So yeah, I, I, I think I totally agree. That's a much better, like, uh, terminal. Thanks, Sorti. <laughs> She's my professor, by the way, so that's. <laughs> Um, I'm talking about Ala Saeed and Akhar, and it's. Um, I'm wondering if it's intended to be seen or watched by someone who, who's bilingual and very familiar with Egypt, because the subtitles are not really subtitles. They, like, you have gaps in them, and, and, it's, and it reduces the meaning to its basic form. There are no details. You don't get exactly what they're saying. You just get the meaning of it. And, uh, and I just. I'm wondering about how, like, your thought process in this, and 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 how we intended to be understood, like the words itself, themselves. Uh, the the choice of the words itself, I think it was very experimental. We tried like a lot of things, and we, I would do things, and then Luli would like, you know, think that this would be better here than that would be, you know. It, it was really like it was very experimental. The actual choice, the. Um, the idea itself was much more, uh, yeah, I mean, it came out of experimentation, but it was much more like, I mean, we actually did try to translate things at the very beginning, and it really didn't work, uh, especially when you have all these layers, and it just, it, it didn't work. I mean, the, it was too uh, noisy, it was too crowded, and also it didn't, it didn't add anything. Like, it's not, I was actually thinking while I was watching this now, like when people are laughing, uh, and I think this happens like more for Arabic speakers, and that's normal. Uh, with you know, when Lamis Al Hadidi says this is democracy, or Hey, I did democracy. There's nothing, you know, if you if you don't have the reference, then it's, there's nothing funny about a woman saying this is democracy, you know. Um, so in a way, translating everything literally and verbatim like was not didn't work. At some point, we thought of not translating at all, but then. Um, yeah, it was, I think it's a bit too arrogant as well, like not to translate at all. I think there's something, it's true, we, we, we reached this eventually, um, exactly as you said, because it also adds something to the text, to the film. So, uh, while we, well, as I was saying earlier, with subtitles, you're always trying to hide them. They're always like all these standards for subtitles. It should be this font, it should be, you know, this size, it should be how many words, should never be more than that, because the idea, and it, like at a specific part of the frame, so that eventually with time you don't see it. So we were thinking of like maybe turning this over and have the, okay, like we have subtitles, you know, like if, if you have it flaunted. So <laughs> we just like really went all the way with making it part of the image. Um, 
And so, uh, concerning the bilingual thing, I totally agree. I think you know you get most of the film as a bilingual. Um, I think. <laughs> the second, um, the film where you are reading a text in English, this, uh, you know, this monologue, and then you talked about trying to make that film, translate that uh, text and film, therefore, into Arabic, right? And how the Arabic sort of reveals the gender. And normally, you know, self-translation is supposed to be a very privileged position to be in because you're actually creating an original, as you said, right? But here it seems to me that you backed, you backed from actually doing the film in Arabic, which makes self-translation an instance of self-censorship. Uh, um, and why did you back? And how did it feel to sort of suddenly self-censor? No, I did not self-censor, and I, I talked about it today, <laughs> but... Uh... No, no, but it's just, it's actually, I'm, 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 I'm thinking of doing it. I think it's just with time, what happened is, like this film, like I, it was barely shown, I think, you know, like I showed it like in a very brief, thing. it was a workshop in New York, and um, so it was done for, for that, and then very few people saw it, and then someone wanted to screen it last month, and I started thinking, or actually, I don't, I, I thought, okay, when it's screened in Egypt, what do we do? So I thought about doing the Arabic version, but I got carried away with other projects. It's just, you know, like, it's, it's just sometimes very difficult to go back and do like a translation of something that I did three, three years ago. Uh, it, I think it's very interesting. It makes it very different, but I don't know. I just never had the, um, you know, like, like this state of mind to go back and I, I worked on new stuff. So. <laughs> Uh, it's just, I, I seem to have gone through different experience than most everybody, so I guess it's got something in my mind. But for me, I had a dissociation between the image I was seeing and the, the sound I was hearing. I was concentrating on both, I think because the image was not moving fa too fast, so it gave me, it allowed me to follow that image alone and the sound alone. For me, it was a, a first experience whenever... For for Rala Said and Akhar, um, for for me it was like I w I was doing two things I was multitasking, and it was the first time that I experienced this kind of thing because always whenever you hear the sound with a movie, uh, you you kind of know that it's related to it. But for me it was like I was starting after like a minute or so, seeing an image and following that alone and and hearing the sound and following that alone. I don't know. Um, not just Ala Said and Akhar. There was another time when a guy was moving his lips, but it wasn't saying what the, what the speech was saying. Yeah. So it wasn't the same. And you'd have to follow the image and follow that differently. <laughs> For us. So I guess it's, a different, it's an experience that doesn't seem to be shared. But. No, I, I think you, you were saying something similar, right? About this, uh, no, I don't mean they're not associated. No, I mean it's I was following. Yeah, of, I was following both, attention. but sometimes I felt that it was there were symbols, oh, okay. the ladder, the toilet. <laughs> For oh, yeah. me, they meant something. <laughs> well, we watched them like six times. Um, I just wanted to like. Uh, it seems to me that it's the. It's not just an image, right? It's uh, it's a space. Like most of uh, what you're showing, I'm talking about on uh, on a different note. There's a sense of uh, spatial dimension always, uh, and there's movement within the frame, like a very steady frame. Space has a very important effective dimension in what's going on. But then you, it seems also to me that there are different uh, spaces, like you're moving between, sometimes it's in the US, I, and I guess that because of the mood and so on, sometimes it's in Egypt and so on. And I'm asking if there's a specific narrative you wanna say in this kind of shift in space or not, uh, I think initially, initially when like the the idea started with the talk shows, I was I was in New York and and hence came like the idea of filming in New York and the film was supposed to be in New York, but then I got back and uh, 
I mean, I think actually we, I, 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 can't, I can't seem to make up my mind about it if the film would have been like completely different if it's shot in Egypt entirely or in New York. Definitely it would have been a different thing, but if the affect itself that you're talking about is, is much different. Um, in a way, it just, it just didn't, for me at least, it just didn't really seem to matter, I think, like where the space. Um, in the sense of the, this transformation from the US to Egypt or from s somewhere else, because the, it's the continuity of the sound that somehow was forefronted in the experience itself. Y you know what I mean? Um, so f at least on that level, on the very experiential level, when, when I was listening to this in New York and when I was listening it to Egypt, in Egypt, it, I mean, there were some slight differences, but it's not I wouldn't say it's like a radically different experience in terms of being more physically, uh, you know, like uh, uh, present in the space or not. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. I feel that there's a different, the, like a difference in the form of experience and form of affect when it comes to space. Uh, frankly, one of the reasons why this film is amazing and so effective for me is that it reminds me of uh, moments when like you live in the States for uh, three years and you're following the TV shows and stuff like that while like you're in, in your headphones and like you're just buying stuff from the supermarket and like uh, probably thinking about uh, Foucault or something like that text that you have to write a paper about and that's why also I love the discourse. And the forms come in a very, like a very, it, it's, it's very alienating moments, right? In which like you're listening to Lamisa Hariri and at the same time you're like moving it, like walking in Amsterdam <laughs> Alley, right? Uh, but this is a completely different experience from like the like later in the film when when you start to see a kind of like an Egyptian kind of uh, uh, soundscape and also visual scape. Uh, and I was thinking, I mean, personally, I, it was different for me as an as a as a, as a listener and viewer. And I'm trying to understand my feelings, and that's why I'm asking. The yeah, I, me too. I know I'm trying to understand. <laughs> Hello, hello. <laughs> and I, I thought the, the whole, uh, I don't know if you call it lecture, performance, or whatever it is, and the whole intellectual and cinematic, because it's not only intellectual, it's also cinematic approach to dissociate and blend and play and put layers to the sound levels and the image, absolutely fascinating. But I have to say with the last film, I don't remember the name, I'm very sorry, I had problems about the anecdotal effect of uh, Mahmoud Saad and Lamis Al Hadidi, and it sort of uh, took me into another zone that I personally actually don't care about now. I really I don't want to see, and I don't think it was disturbing enough to shake me. And it, it 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 sort of bothered me. I'm sorry to be frank, and the images of foreign that seem from a foreign country. I don't know if they give me something. I mean, I understand what you're talking about, but as you say, said with Luli, it it's either works or it doesn't. And some of the moments didn't work for me. Um, but otherwise, I was absolutely fascinated by the, f the earlier films and the whole process. Uh, completely fascinated. The, and also about the, the, the search for the sounds. I think it's it's not any sound. It's 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 it's. Uh, I imagine sort of trying to do that. I mean, absolute nightmare. I mean, to to find these sound bites and uh, searching for. It's easier actually in a way to search for probably for images from this. Uh, you know. La la la. But I think it is. You know, it's not. Uh, I, of course, I imagine if you get into sound, you're going to see sounds, you're going to hear sounds, you're going to be obsessed by sounds. Um, it's not different, but I mean, mm. the idea of collecting images to collecting sounds. Yeah, I mean, uh, but I, I thought that was, and, 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 and the layering and the, the, the whole process, the intellectual, and as, again, I say cinematic also, approach to dissociating. Then I, get, I started getting also lost with, you know, text that, doesn't fit translation and I couldn't get sort of a link somehow to tangible, or I missed the link. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. It's, I think it's very, you, yeah, you missed the link. <laughs> no, I mean like really uh, with, I think it's very normal. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a film that has a lot of elements, 
and I think what happens that some like some might resonate with people and some not. Like like for example, with you, like what resonated with you also with were like images in the U.S. For example, like with someone with a completely different experience, like you know maybe it would be like what's this about? Um, and I I don't know. I think it works on different levels. So I think it's I mean it's it's totally understandable. Yeah. Um, I'll keep it brief. I just, well, first of all, thank you for the second movie, Al Said and Akhar. It's the second time for me to see it. It's a masterpiece in defamiliar defamiliarization. It's really great. Uh, my burning question is the in the story about the nightingale, was that taken from the uh, Brother Grimm's fairy tales cartoon in Arabic? Hans Anderson? That's the one, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, but the I was wondering why you chose that story specifically because they do all the fairy tales and they're all equally dark and creepy and wonderful. I think Blue Beards is my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. Uh, this is why I thought maybe that's the or, the original. Is 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 uh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, Grim Brothers. That was the original. Yeah, um, but that's in, in the UK. Ah, uh, no, no. It wasn't Japanese, but it was something that apparently that thing that was dubbed into Arabic. Uh, which I don't think we noticed at, at the time. I wasn't aware of any yeah, like Captain Majid, or I didn't know Captain Majid is Japanese. <laughs> um. I want to ask you about this excerpt from Lamisa uh, Hadidi and Mahmoud Saad program. What did you try to convey? Did you try to be sarcastic, for example? Why did it choose Taf Yaqasha, for example, to be uh, this Lamisa uh, Hadidi and Mahmoud Saad part? Yes, as a general, yes. Because, yes, this, this you know, this um, kind of the whole uh, media uh, state on the TV, it was some kind of a mass distraction uh, way. So did you try to convey a message to say something? You didn't write any comment. Why did you choose this? Or why did you choose Tafiya Kesha, for example, or any other Islamic, uh, you know? Uh, it's actually, it's a very good question. Like the choices, eventually, like they had to be. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Maybe on some level that I'm not aware of. <laughs> but, uh, no, but I think I was basically. I mean, we had loads of different uh, 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 clips. Um, at uh, I think at the end, this is just what I said. I think um, you know we chose what works. Uh, we are. Well, all, all the while being very aware, I think, of the political, um, you know, uh, choice involved or the political implications of the choices. And um, 
I think at the, at, the, at the very, we went astray sometimes like with almost exclusively like very like nationalist pro-state uh, uh, clips. We had stuff from Ikhwan, we had like a bunch of different things. Uh, I think eventually the film is always made at, uh, you know, regardless of the process, it's always finished at a specific moment in time. And I think that was influential on the process. Very early on, when I, when the, like with the very first draft of the film, uh, it was actually focusing a lot it was on the revolutionary rhetoric after um, after 2011, the sort of like very commercial, uh, commodified rhetoric of the revolution, that was really what the interest was. But actually we don't have that anymore. Like nobody's really, uh, you know, talking about this stuff uh, much. So I think it's always defined by a moment but I don't think there, is a, there was an intention to convey something very specific. But of course there is, I mean, I have an opinion, so I think it shows. I, I think, I mean, actually, if you think about it, because we were asked this question before, if you think about it, like, okay, it's Lamis al-Hadim Mahmoud Saad, I mean, who else is there? Uh, who else now is there? that we, you know what I mean? Um, I think in a way the idea, this idea of this occupied soundscape or like a soundscape that's filled with a very specific direct kind of rhetoric, a singular rhetoric. No, I think at one point I remember you were talking a lot about the way the people spoke, their silences and the way they created certain effect in the way they spoke and that played a big role. For example, you, you cannot have a lot of remaked because she will not sustain, <laughs> you know, the like she's very proper, she's very and and I think you were interested in the effect that people have not through what they're saying, but through the way they are actually saying things. The silences, the the you know, then he did or like sighing or you know, and and we were very interested in people who were actually using this kind of language or like sort of meta language or if I remember correct. This, no, 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 totally actually, thank you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think the performance or this performativity played a really, really big part eventually. Like this is why we have parts with, you know, all the, mm, uh, you know, um, um, actually I wish we had more of that. This is something you know, that I wish we had a lot more of that and a, let, a lot less of the, you know, the, like, content, uh, but, you know. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, 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 our question also what was always like, how is this different from, you know, Basim Yusuf or like from, you know, something which basically just stitches together a bunch of clips and, you know, okay, they're funny. Um, so at least that's what we tried not to, do exactly, I don't know if it's... Can I ask the last question? Okay. To bring us back to text, you use a lot, uh, there's a lot of intertextuality in your films. You borrow texts from other people and you, they, then suddenly they are made to signify um, something other than themselves, right? Why are you doing that? And I noticed that they are, you know, very short passages that you don't necessarily need to have taken from anybody else, whether it be Sumay Ramadan or Iman Bersel or, you know, in the earlier film as well. Uh, so what is it exactly that you want to do as you um, make these texts translate themselves into your film? I ask myself this question a lot, and uh, I think eventually um, what happens is I'm reading things, and I just love them, so I I, I use them. I think that's a very, you know, uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> uh, I think eventually, yeah, I think I'm, I, 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 t I tend to be very structural, like especially like when you know, a film is eventually coming together. But the process, not necessarily, at least not anymore. But uh, I mean, basically, I don't know, I'm reading things and I th I, I'm not, I, I mix them with my stuff as well. So it's not all, you know, it's like uh, little bits of this and that. 
And for me, it's still all autobiographical, I would think, because I'm reading this at this moment. It's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's creating this, you know, evoking a certain emotion in me or like, of course, in any reader, I mean. So it, it becomes like, you know, you, you, I, I think it's my way of making it my own in a way. Um, uh, and for the text, especially, is a very different relation to uh, an appropriation to the um, to the than the image uh, than the sounds, because the sounds uh, are appropriated mostly because I'm I mean fascinated by them on one level, but also critical of them. Uh, but the texts, I'm really fascinated by them, you know. Um, so it's a very different relationship, I think. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, thank you for a fascinating evening. Really very rich. We have loved it. Huh?